would you like to be able to jump in your vehicle and go wherever you want while being totally self-sufficient and comfortable? Well, today we're going to talk to you about overlanding. We're embracing the next chapter by simplifying our lives, exploring our dreams, and connecting with what truly matters. Hey guys, we're taking a little break from renovating the RV and just we just need to get out and clear our heads away from the chaos of the world right now. So overlanding is fairly new in the United States, but if you're the type of person who just enjoys the freedom to explore away from the crowds and away from the confinements of things like campgrounds and RV parks, which let's be honest, given the current pandemic, you might not even be able to find a reservation at anyways, then stay tuned. Because in this video, we're gonna tell you what overlanding is and how to get started. For the last 25 years, Lance and I have lived and traveled all over the world. And so exploring and adventure have really just become part of our DNA. And we have found that the best way to unplug is overlanding and just, it's the best way to get away from all the distractions and rat race. So stay tuned for later in the video when we share with you two of the best resources for finding some of these free breathtaking camping spots. Yeah, so overlanding has actually been around for a long time in places like Australia and like when they go on a safari in Africa and travel long distances in a vehicle. It's actually similar to RVing or camping, but it's going to those remote places that you can't really get to in a regular vehicle or an RV. So some people really just like the independence to be able to travel and explore remote places that are off the beaten path. Or, you know, some people want to do really long distance journeys like the Pan American Highway, where you go from the very northern point of Alaska, the Arctic Circle basically, and drive all the way to the bottom tip of South America. Well, you can't really do that in an RV. You have to have a special vehicle for that. So an overlanding vehicle, an overlanding is really just using a vehicle to get to those very like remote locations away from the tourists and the crowds and to those like picture you know picturesque places mm -hmm. um that you know that they're very hard to get to and you might be wondering what the difference between overlanding and off-roading is we get that question a lot yeah. and uh, overlanding is more just about the destination so whether you may need to go off-roading like we did today to find this beautiful side of this mountain that we're at right now to camp at but off-roading is just about that like think of Moab Utah where you're just like driving alongside of a cliff and like going over boulders and that's the fun of off-roading whereas the fun of overlanding is more about the destination so one of the things with overlanding too is that typically overlanding can be like longer journeys so you can have multi-day multi-week even months long uh, journeys depending on the amount of terrain you're doing so for example with me um, I did a cross-country trip I started in Washington DC and then went to the southwest part of the United States and it was like 10 or 15 days it took me to do the whole trip part of that reason was because one of the things you do in overlanding is you try to use you know um, the back roads or you know what I used was called the blue highways it's basically the old highway system in the United States and you're using roads these back roads to and, or remote trails to get to these locations and one of the advantages of that is honestly um, I know on my trip I got to meet a lot of people and just see a lot of places that I never would have saw if I was just you know cruising by on the interstate so really I would say that one that's one of the big things of overlanding it's really about the journey it's about taking your time you're not just in a hurry to get there um, it's really about you know that exploration and taking some time and, and the destination like Jenny said and then the other thing I would tell you one of the probably the biggest advantages that we like about overlanding is that um, when you overland you know if you can see our setup back here you can almost always camp for free so you know that's a big advantage where you're not having to pay you know campsite fees or RV park fees and stuff like that 
you're almost always um, camping for free using your overlanding setup so you can actually save a lot of money um, when you go on these you know trips and things like that uh, by, by using overlanding and you might be wondering what you're going to need to go overlanding and I'm thinking back to when we first started and really all we had was our little two-man tent that we put on the ground that we would stuff into the Jeep and um, what else a map and um, some yeah our camping gear in the vehicle so um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy as you can see we've um, gotten some things over time for more comforts especially me as a woman I do appreciate um, the shower that you got <laughs> especially when we're out here for days or weeks at a time and I also love the rooftop tent I I love it because we're in Arizona where there's a lot of creepy crawly like scorpions, snakes, tarantulas. You never know what's on the ground. So I feel safer up there. I, I like that setup. Um, but you don't need all this fancy stuff. So the one thing we want to stress to you guys is that it's easy to look on social media or on YouTube or on some of these you know shows that are out there and you think like, man, I can't afford that. You got to spend $50,000 on a vehicle and all this gear to get involved in this. And we're here to tell you that is absolutely false. Um, you do not need to go and spend thousands of dollars. You don't need to buy a brand new truck or SUV or whatever to go do this. So for me, on my journey, I did an entire cross country overland journey with just my, you know, my Jeep was my daily driver and just some camping gear that I had uh, sitting around. So, you, you know, we're trying to tell you, you don't have to spend all this money to try it out. And that's probably the best approach we would say is before you go investing in all the cool gear and the gadgets and all that, go out and try it and see if you actually like this. And then like us, if, you, if you're like, okay, I kind of like this, then you can move on to the next step and say, okay, what do I need to invest or what, you know, what, what, how can I upgrade my vehicle to make it a little bit uh, better to get to some remote locations or things like that. So in another video, we're actually going to, we're going to tell you some of the gear and gadgets that, um, that we've used for ours. We're going to try to help you guys save some time and money and tell you some tips and tricks and stuff like that of, of what to do. But again, we want to stress to you guys, you do not need all that stuff just to get started. You can take your daily driver, the gear, you know, some camping gear that you've got and just go out and, and try it out and explore and see if you love it. And if you do, then you can decide whether you want to make that investment or not, but you don't need that to get started. As promised, one of the resources that we use is an app called iOverlander and it's basically a community of overlanders who share like free camping spots, overlanding trails, where to fuel up and a lot of other great features. So the second resource we use is a community called Overland Bound, which is probably the biggest online community of overlanders. And through their website and their app, Overland Bound provides things like free campsites, access to overland trails, even meetups with other, other overlanders where you can get involved with things like expeditions going down to like Baja, Mexico or up to Alaska. So there is a one-time membership to join Overland Bound, but we found that it's well worth the price for the benefits and the people you get to meet. So guys, overlanding, uh... <laughs> Either one of us in the center. <laughs> so this might go on the bloopers. <laughs> yeah.